Hi, Mark Palmquist here, uh, and it just occurred to me that some of you might actually not know the purpose of this uh, this project that I'm working on. It's called the Wedge, I call it the Wedge Rower. Let me give you some background. Uh, I've been studying hydroplaning, the physics of hydroplaning for about five and a half years, and I've built several experimental boats um, that have uh, hydroplaning lift and um, this all started back in the 80s when my dad started experimenting with with um, hydroplaning wings on sailboats and um, he had really good success with it um, and then um, his testing came to a halt when he died at the age of 50 and um, so about Five years ago, I started doing research and found out that uh, a lot of his theories and ideas still are valid today. So, so let's get to the subject at hand. Um, so this this is a uh, double wedge shaped hull, and if you I've already tested this in the water, and if you if you get it to a certain velocity. Um, the water will deflect downward off of here and it will not be able to rise. Uh, water travels in a sine wave. Once it leaves the transom of a boat, it, it goes back up and then goes down. And once the velocity is a certain velocity, it cannot reattach to the surface. Um, so so uh, there's a point on a ski boat where the transom becomes dry. It starts out wet and then it becomes dry and that's that has to do with um, a certain speed uh, the 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 speed uh, this way compared to the 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 basically the the speed uh, that gravity has on on the water so water when it's flat there's no force on the water but if you depress water the water surrounding it will go up and it will create a wave and the speed at which it goes up and down has to do with the density of the water and the force of gravity. And um, so um, anyway, the, that's, that's basically what the Freud number studies. It studies the, the ratio between the speed at which water will go up and down and, and the speed at which the boat is traveling. So there is, a, there is a point where the water will be deflecting down and it can never reattach to the other side. Um, so what does this mean? It means that the, uh, the wetted surface area of this will be cut in half at a certain speed. And so that greatly reduces the drag. Um, so anybody can jump on a surfboard and you, know, you can paddle and stuff and you're not gonna hydroplane unless you get on top of a wave. And then it's all speed dependent. Once you hit the wave and the wave is traveling at a certain speed, you know, six to eight knots or whatever, your surfboard will, will hydroplane uh, or your stand-up paddleboard or whatever. Um, or your skimboard, you can, you can run and jump on a skimboard and you can be hydroplaning. Uh, and that's, it's the same thing. It, it has to do with uh, reaching a certain speed. Um, so what I'm doing with this project is uh, I'm trying to determine if I can actually get myself onto hydroplane just from human power on flat water with no wave and no running start. Um, it's already been done. People have developed all kinds of uh, um, boats and kayaks and bike like things that will hydrofoil now hydrofoil is different from hydroplaning and uh, hydrofoil has a two surfaced wing and hydroplaning has basically only an underside um, that's the difference so in general but but research has shown that uh, if you if you have an idealized hydroplaning hull, um, you can get quite close to the efficiencies of hydroplaning. You can't equal it, but you can get close. So that is my theory that 
maybe nobody has tried this. I don't know. Maybe maybe somebody has. But okay, so let's look at the physics of it. Um, let's look at human-powered airplanes. Um, one of the first ones that I recall as a child growing up was the Gossamer Gossamer Albatross, and that was a lightweight airplane that had basically a guy in a in a cage that was pedaling. Um, basically a bike and that propelled a, a propeller and the the airplane weighed between 70 and 80 pounds and that's the same weight that my wedge rower is going to be it's going to be it started out at 50 pounds but now with the rowing frame and the two oars it's going to be closer to 70. so uh if if, if a human can pedal and lift 80 pounds of airplane and themselves off the ground and sustain in flight. Um, actually, the world record is, um, there was another airplane called the Gossamer, uh, I think it was Condor, Gossamer Condor. But anyway, somebody, he flew for four hours. And on both airplanes, the weight was around 70 pounds. And on both airplanes, the maximum speed was the same. It was 18, um, I think it was 18 miles an hour or knots. I can't remember. Um, so that was interesting. They were both the same speed. And then I looked at the the, the top speed for a hydrofoiling human-powered um, boat, and it turns out to be around, uh, I think it was like 19 knots. So 19 knots is kind of like 20, 22 miles an hour, something like that. So... Um, and if you if you compare the two, uh, hydroplaning would be somewhere in between there, as far as efficiency um, and speed potential. So, um, so the other reason is I, I I noticed that the hydroplaning wing on my sailboat started to 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 actually hydroplane at speeds lower than I initially thought. Um, my dad on his video always said that his wing had to have about 10 knots or eight, eight to 10 knots of speed. And then I was like, well, you could never make a rowboat that could uh, sustain a speed like that. But then when my, my wing started hydroplaning at um, five or six miles an hour, I was like, whoa, uh, something went off in my head. I'm like, uh, maybe it's possible to have a rowboat that could break free in hydroplane uh, with human power. So uh, that is the theory, that's the science. Um, uh, the, the key is to get the idealized shape, uh, the idealized uh, aspect ratio. Uh, this is sort of a low aspect ratio, but the, uh, the one that I'm building is, uh, right behind you is, um, is uh, idealized uh, with, as far as the angle and the um, the proportions of the width to the length of the of the hulls, and there's two hulls. Um, so uh, the other thing that th that this boat is doing that's different from the hydroplaning wing is it actually has two surfaces. So um, so the surfaces the the um, hydroplaning lift is dependent on uh, weight per surface area. So, um, for instance, a, a skimboard can hydroplane holding a human, uh, and that surface area is about 4.7 square feet. So, uh, but it does require a speed of about, uh, I would, I've estimated, you know, the speed of people running is around, um, eight to 10 miles an hour. So, um, with this boat, I have basically two skimmers and they're larger. And so the reason they're larger is because it's supporting me and the boat, the weight of the boat. Um, so um, as far as I know, uh, nobody's ever tried to do hydroplaning. People have done helicopters, they've done airplanes, and they've done hydrofoil boats, but um, Maybe this won't work. Maybe maybe uh, the next version will. But uh, I'm convinced that it, it is possible. 
Um, it might be that I have to make the boat uh, with a different construction method, and maybe it has to be less than 70 pounds um, for it to actually work, but uh, we'll find out soon enough. <laughs>